The fastest way to reach your English goals is to build habits that support those English goals. And the reason you might feel that speaking English is scary or that remembering more complex expressions is difficult or that listening to and understanding fast English speakers is frustrating is because you haven't built a habit around these things. I know, I know, I talk about habits all the time, but only because they are so important. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you how building and sustaining a habit doesn't even need to be that difficult and how just focusing on one habit can change the way you learn English and how quickly you reach your fluency goals. And if you often don't have the mental energy to learn English because you've got a full-time job, you have a family or a household to take care of and you keep falling off track, maybe you ask yourself, why am I like this? Why can't I speak English calmly? Why do I get so angry at myself every time I make a preposition mistake? Why I can't remember those prepositions? Or perhaps you're jumping from one English course to the other, but never really feeling like you've actually made real progress with your fluency, you're going to need this video. I'll break down for you exactly what I did to change a couple of my unhelpful habits this year, including reading, meditating, reflecting in the mornings instead of starting my day scrolling through social media, which is what I used to do. And I'll also be talking about the way I help my students create helpful English habits like stopping the obsession over grammar mistakes and having conversations as a way to learn from those mistakes, not feeling nervous or frustrated when they are watching a movie without subtitles, or speaking English calmly without worrying about what's going to happen in the conversation so they could use all those conversations to learn from them. But unlike a house, the harsh truth is, because your brain is your brain only, no one else is going to build your fluency for you. Hey English Anna, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've already watched a couple of my other videos. My name is Chubby, I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach and this is a channel for English learners who want to learn how to make vocabulary more memorable and how to speak English more comfortably and confidently and freely with the help of listening and spoken interaction. So if these are topics you'd like to hear more about and watch some other short or long form content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get my weekly updates on everything around speaking, listening or vocabulary learning to improve your fluency. Many struggling English learners feel horrible about themselves because of having unhealthy habits that don't help them with their fluency and it could include overthinking before going into a conversation or feeling terrible about themselves because of how much time they waste on social media simply because they aren't exactly sure what to do to improve their fluency. Not realizing that these are just habits that if you know the simple way I'm going to show you how to build and sustain a habit, they could change one habit and change their results. In order to change your habits, you'll need to understand how your brain works. Just like when it comes to driving, we'll need to have an idea of how the steering wheel works or some other parts of the car. Otherwise, we can't drive efficiently. We can't learn English efficiently unless we understand how our brain works. Most struggling English learners think that there's some magical moment when they will suddenly feel more motivated to speak English or review vocabulary. And I perfectly understand if you do the same because we hear about motivation all the time and how important it is. But very few English coaches talk about how to tap into motivation the way your brain works so you could really turn it into your advantage. Motivation is basically a bunch of chemicals in your brain that your brain releases in order to motivate you to do the things that are already part of your habits. Do you know what your brain's main job is? Is it to help you speak English fluently or to help you live a happy life? Your brain's main job is to keep you alive. So your brain sees any habit, anything you repeat as something safe. So it's going to keep motivating you to do that thing because it keeps you safe. And anything that's new, 
is dangerous and it's a threat. So your brain will do everything it can to help you stay on the habits that keep you safe. Understanding how habits bring you forward with your fluency more than anything you do is literally the fastest way to reach your English goals. This is why so many people are having a hard time giving up smoking, drugs, and also the reason why a lot of struggling English learners keep overthinking, they keep feeling scared of speaking in front of others, or they keep procrastinating on the things they need to do for their fluency. They are simply habits. But at the later part of this video, I'm going to show you how you don't have to stay a prisoner to your unhelpful English habits. Yes, overthinking, worrying about your English, or even not feeling ready to speak are all habits. When most English learners think about habits, they think about things like going to conversation classes, reviewing vocabulary that's important, reading books in English. These are what we call habits of behavior. Not practicing having conversations in English because you think people will judge your English and the mistakes you make is a habit of thinking. Being angry at yourself for not remembering the perfect preposition or the perfect verb to use with a noun is a habit of thinking. Always doubting yourself if you can't control everything in a conversation you're having in English is a habit of thinking too. The good news is you weren't born with your habits, you learned them. Which means two things. You don't have to blame yourself for having habits now that don't really support your fluency goals. And that you can unlearn those unhelpful habits and build new habits that actually help you improve your fluency in the long term as the fastest way to reach your English goals. As you can see on this channel, we don't necessarily talk about listening, vocabulary, or speaking related topics, because I also want to help you become a productive, amazing, efficient English learner. And if you'd like to hear more about this and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you get my weekly updates on anything around the mindset of a successful English learner as well. And if you'd like to get access to the exact method that I help my language coaching clients build and then sustain incredibly helpful language learning habits, that includes three self-coaching tools that you could always access anytime you fall off track, you learn how to manage your emotions, manage your thinking so you could reach your English goals faster, get access to all the swipe files, PDFs, all the wisdom of 15 years of teaching English and more than 20 years of learning languages, hit the first link in the description below and sign up for my free masterclass. When you find something difficult or you feel like you're horrible at speaking English in a group or recording yourself, understanding dialogue between people in a movie without subtitles or reading a page from a book without checking the dictionary all the time. It's because you don't have the habit. It's only because when you're doing something new, you will get the motivation, that dopamine hit after you do the activity. Remember, your brain wants you to keep repeating the old habit and it doesn't care if that habit is a helpful or an unhelpful habit for your future English goals. So let's say you finish dinner and if you have a habit of opening up Instagram and starting to scroll mindlessly on the feed, then your brain will automatically give you that dopamine right after you finish dinner to motivate you to keep doing your old habit. But you could spend that time after dinner, let's say, speaking to yourself as a way to practice. But if you don't have the habit of speaking to yourself after dinner, you won't get the motivation, you won't get that dopamine hit. Your brain keeps encouraging that old safe habit of scrolling through Instagram. Your brain will automate everything that it sees repeatedly. And this is why consistency is so, so, so important. So at the beginning stages of building any new habit to make sure you use the fastest way to reach your English goals, at the beginning of building any kind of English habit, you need to take action, even if you don't feel like doing it. Because this is how you tell your brain, this is the habit that I want to automate in the long term. And every time you do that in that beginning stage, you need to reward yourself. So eat your favorite chocolate, 
open up a bottle of champagne and drink the whole bottle or put a tick in the calendar as a way to keep motivating yourself towards that new habit. And as you consistently do this, your brain releases those chemicals earlier and earlier. You just have to be careful not to fall back to your old habit. And this is where a lot of people fall off the track because they don't know what I'm going to share with you. The best way I explain this to my clients is habits are like walking through a jungle. Your old habits, studying grammar rules or avoiding conversations, feeling frustrated, overthinking, have been repeated so many times that there's already a highway or a motorway for that habit in your brain. And if you don't consciously choose the new habit at the beginning stages, the small dirt path that you are cutting through as you're building that new habit, your brain will always find it easier to take that old route. You've got to stay super consistent in the first 21 days of forming that new habit because that's the amount of time it takes your brain to kind of equalize the old habit with the new habit. And after that day, it's going to be easier and easier for you to choose the new habit because you get that dopamine earlier and earlier in the process of doing that activity until around six to seven days, which is roughly the time it takes for a habit to be established. And by this day, you will automatically get that dopamine, that motivation even before doing that activity because it has become your safe habit that your brain just keeps repeating. Like we did in the example of finishing dinner, you were motivated to start scrolling on Instagram right after finishing dinner, which means you will save a lot more energy for yourself. You feel so much more happy because you're making more progress with your English. I'm gonna challenge you now. Think about one habit. And here's a list of habits that you could automatize that will help you build your fluency. Think of that one habit and choose that one habit that you think would get you the closest to your English fluency and start acting on it today, like right now after watching this video. And I promise you, if you stay consistent with it, in 67 days, you will have your brain and more than 30 neurochemicals doing the work for you so you can progressively build your fluency and get one and another and another step closer to your English fluency. Let me know how it goes and if you need any support, just leave a comment.